Hi everybody, Trish here with some more yoga. Hopefully a pretty short video this morning, maybe about 15 minutes for our feet. I've been walking more with the quarantine and the gorgeous weather, even hiking, and I've had a lot of heel pain and calf pain. So I looked on Amazon and found this amazing book by Katie Bowman. It's called Simple Steps to Foot Pain Relief, The New Science of Healthy Feet. She has an incredible blog and website and practice of her own that she has to offer the world. And I would highly recommend looking into that. And here are the exercises plus a couple that I love as well. And it's recommended to do these one or two times a day, maybe even three for about a minute to 30 seconds each. And I'll have my timer to help us stay in the poses. Okay. So we begin with a towel. This is just a bath towel that I rolled up and I just keep it on my floor. I actually keep it on my floor next to my desk so that if I am going to go sit down at my desk or stand up from my desk, sometimes I'll stand and do a couple of these exercises. So the first one, we place the ball of one foot on the towel and the heel on the floor. And at first the foot is behind us, the other foot is behind us. And then as we bring all the weight into our shoulder, hip and heel alignment, the weight is in that heel, we can start to step the other foot forward but we don't lean into that front foot. We're actually still leaning into the heel of the back foot or the book or the foot that's on the towel. And we start to relax, relaxing the quads, the thighs, the knees, and breathing. It's funny how these short exercises can really make a difference. They're like most physical therapy exercises where you're surprised that if you do them, you feel better. For me, that's definitely been true. We've been in this pose for almost a minute, just a couple seconds left. Let's just take one more breath. And we'll start another minute on the other side. So we'll step that foot back, maybe twist the foot out, placing the next foot on the blanket, ball of the foot on the blanket, the heel on the ground, First, we have the foot back, so we get really nice and stable. We wanna make sure that the toes are pointing straight ahead on that towel. That's important for your hips. As you lean the weight into the heel of the foot on the towel, then you can step the other foot forward. I like to have a chair with me or beside me just to support so that it's not about balancing as much as it is really allowing the stretch to sink into the calf of the foot on the towel really trying to relax the thighs and the glutes. That takes a lot of work, just releasing the kneecap. I've also been experimenting with different kinds of shoes. I'm looking for shoes that have no heel height. Most of our shoes have at least a quarter inch to an inch of height, even our walking shoes. And it's better to have them be at a zero drop, but that kind of shoes has started making my calves sore. There we go. Go ahead and come out of that pose. Just bend the knees, twist them around a little bit. Excellent. The next is to stretch the top of the foot. So I like to do this standing, stepping back with one foot, pressing those toes under, pushing into the top part of the foot. I try to balance out between the pinky toe and the big toe all the way across the toe joints. They're stretching it out. This is called the gripper muscles. You can do this standing or sitting. Sitting is nice because you can kind of do it at your desk, just keeping the toes curled under or flattening them. And we'll just do about 30 seconds here for each side. I don't know if you can see my foot very good. They say that the gripper on the top of the foot is really tight because of wearing flip-flops all the time, if you wear flip-flops. So it's more productive for the foot and creates more flexibility if you're wearing a shoe that goes all the way up to the ankle. This will just help so that you use the entire foot and not just grabbing on with your toes to keep your shoe on your foot. Okay, let's go ahead and switch to the other side. You can just curl that foot under can't quite get far enough from the, from the camera here just to curl it under. There we go. And let it stretch. You 
is also a great opportunity to just be still even for 30 seconds of our day. Let's take one more breath. And go ahead and release. Just wiggling those toes, shaking them out a little bit. We're going to continue stretching the back of the legs by pl placing both feet on the balls of the feet on the towel. The heels are on the floor. And then with the knees a little bent, you can place your hands on a chair or a stool or the bed. You want to keep the back flat and try to straighten the backs of the knees, but relaxing the legs. And if there's any pain in the back of the knees, you'll want to bend them slightly. So this is all about stretching those hamstrings, but check your toes, make sure they're pointing straight ahead. So because of wearing flatter shoes and walking more, I am having some plantar fasciitis, which is the tightening in the arch of the foot and the heel. So sometimes it'll hurt when I walk in the middle of the night or at the end of a long day. Icing the heel has helped a lot. Also heating some of the muscles in the back leg. It's amazing how these tools can really help. They're so simple, but they make it so that the next day I'm back out walking again, which I just don't want to miss. The weather is too beautiful. And that is almost a full minute here in this stretch. Let's just take two more breaths. Slowly bending the knees so that you can bring the hands to your thighs and stand up. Very nice. And then we can use our tennis ball, which mine rolled away over here. This part of the exercises is really about stretching the foot rather than the calf or the hamstrings. So you place one foot on the ball right under the toes of your foot and really kind of grip around the ball with your toes. Lean into your heel. Let's get our feet balanced, maybe one foot back slightly so that you can get a little bit of weight distribution between both feet. Because sometimes it'll really hurt on the toes if they haven't done this much. And then roll to the ball of the foot, pressing the ball right into the ball and maybe even rolling a little bit side to side. In her book, Katie Bowman separates this out and she does each layer of the foot and then she comes back and rolls the foot. I tend to put everything together now I'm in the middle of my foot, I'm on the arch, pressing, maybe rolling a little bit side to side, moving slowly just at your pace down the foot so that now we're much more close to the heel. We're actually finished with our towel, so we can put that away. This one I don't time as much. I just wanna feel into my foot. And if there's a spot that kind of hurts a little more, sometimes I'll lean into that slightly, but I'm not saying pain. If there's pain, I'm going to come away from that sensation. We want that feeling of hurt so good, you know. Once we get to the heel, you can roll a little bit side to side. We're just trying to break up that fascia. And you can roll back and forth. And then moving to the other foot. We wrap the toes around the ball. Get them really gripped onto that ball. Which, of course, is, <laughs> my fingers always do that too, Gripping around a ball is not something that we do on a regular basis. And in her book, she says, for those overachievers among us, you could try walking on river rocks. And some people have um, created these river walk, um, river rock pads or something where you, they glue them all together on like a big tray and they walk across them to keep their feet able to grip. That sounds hard. And definitely my foot would not be very good at that yet. But the interesting thing has been that as I am taking better care of my feet, wearing shoes that are flatter, not necessarily less thickness, I'm, I think I'm gonna have to bring some more softness back into the sole of my foot, but it, it's the same height as the toes. My low back feels so much better. It's bizarre and it's a huge relief. So I'm just rolling back and forth a little bit, <laughs> side to side a little bit. Of course, your ball can always roll away from you. Eventually, we're going to be end up on the heel, remembering to not push into pain. Nice. 
and then that's probably good enough. You can do that again on each foot if it felt really good. And then for our final standing shape, we're gonna do toe lift. So we'll begin by pressing up with the big toes. And I don't really time this one because it, it pretty quickly gets intense for me. And then I'm gonna try to just lift the next toe with the big toe. The third one wants to come up with it. I'm trying to get better at this <laughs> and go slow. It's kind of a balance between lifting up and pushing down with those outer toes. Slowly, eventually all the toes end up high away from the floor. So the ball of the foot's still on the ground, the heel is on the ground, but the weight's mostly in the heels. And then go backwards, pinky toes, next toes, all the way down to your big toes. Good, and you can kind of rock the feet a little bit side to side. And then finally, this one's interesting, spreading the toes. So what I do is I take my knee, bend it a little bit, plant the foot down, pointing in a little, and then I press into the big toe and roll the other toes wide and then kind of push into them, see if I can flatten the foot a little bit, see if I can stay there. And my big toe is way far away from that second toe. And then press the other foot down, a little bit of pigeon toe first, maybe even a little ahead of the other foot or right in line, and then spread those toes out and come down into the stance with the big toes kind of hooked into the floor as I've rolled the foot open. And this can be really good for working into the knuckles of the big toes, stuff like that. She has a lot to say about horns and bunions, which is really fascinating. So just another breath here. Maybe we can lift our arms and then slowly release the feet. Good. And we'll end sitting. Um, it's suggested that we place the feet flat on the floor. Maybe sit up on something or have your knees slightly bent, nice and tall. Begin to lean forward. We're back to stretching our hamstrings again. And they say that it takes at least 30 seconds to begin to make a difference. After that, it's just gravy. Of course, you don't want to stay here forever. And you want to be careful of that low back. If there's a lot of tension or pain down there, come back up. Make sure the shoulders and the hips are in alignment with each other. Maybe bend the knees a little bit. Or you could just skip this pose altogether and just do it standing. It might be safer. So let's just take one more breath. And release. You can stay with your feet against the wall or I turned and you can take one ankle across to the other thigh and it doesn't matter how high this knee is. You could even prop it up a little bit. We're going to try to put our fingers between our toes. So start with just the tips of those fingers between the toes. See if you can kind of Point the fingers down toward the top of the foot and then wrap the back of the hand around the bottom of the foot. Now, eventually you might be able to go past the first couple knuckles all the way down to the end of those fingers so that they're right up in between the toes, nice and thick, really opening those joints. You wanna keep your back tall and long, maybe smile a little bit and think about how funny it is that you are holding hands with your own foot. Maybe twist the ankle a little, Bend the foot back and forth a little bit. You can move those toes and then we'll try the other side. And again, I'm not timing this as much. You totally could. Always looking for about a minute in each of these poses. So in the end, it would probably take about 10 or 15 minutes and it's definitely worth it. My low back, my legs and my feet are thanking me. When you feel done there, we will end with toe cruncher or toe squat. So coming up on the hands and knees, curl those toes under, and then begin to sit back on your heels. And my knees are not very wide apart, so I can get just a little bit of stretch through the thighs as well. Eventually, you might want to come up so that you are sitting on your heels. This might be really Hard on your knees, one of my knees is a little tight this morning, you can massage it a little, or you can just stay here, just gently pressing back and forth, or skipping this all together. You can also come up and down here. This is a nice one for strengthening the thighs and stretching the soles of the feet. You can really feel that, you can even massage along the sole of the foot. And that is the end. Coming out of this pose, you'll just lift the fit, the, to the toes a bit, wiggle them out, and then go on with your day. Happy walking, happy healthy feet to everyone. Thank you.